So here I am, and today's talk is called Hobson's Choice. How many of you have heard that term before? Just show of hands. Okay, there are a couple of you. That's great. What it really means, if I distill it all the way down, it means take it or leave it, basically. Take it or leave it. Hobson's Choice, and it's derived from the life and times of Mr. Thomas Hobson. He lived around 1545 to 1631 in Cambridge, woohoo, England. <laughs> And I say woohoo because that's where we were living for a while there. So, how did this come to be? Well, Mr. Hobson, he was an entrepreneur, and he had a really thriving carriage and horse rental, and that's how he made his living. So he's in Cambridge. There's a big university there called Cambridge University, <laughs> and so there are students that will rent out the horses. And he notices, wow, these guys are really riding these horses hard. Come forward with me, 2016. Here we are at KU. We've got students back. Yes. yes. All right. How are they driving here? Whoa, right? Fast, accelerated, racing to the red light, in and out, right? <laughs> Taking risks. Why? Because they believe they're immortal. Correct? <laughs> they haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> so they're immortal. All right, go back with me now to Mr. Hobson's time. Not a car, but horses, living, breathing, horses, same behavior. Fast, speeding, abrupt turns, jumping over, racing everywhere they go. These poor horses. So he figures, you know what? I've got to figure out something. I've got to find a way to take care of these horses better. So he comes up with Hobson's choice. How did it work? Well, they would come to his stable and rent to rent a horse, and they would have. Amazing choices of all these beautiful horses, and yet there was only one horse that was available to them, and that was the horse that was closest to the stable door. So they had a choice. The student, if you want to ride, that was the horse that you were going to ride, or you weren't going to ride that day. And what that did is it gave all of the horses time to relax, to breathe, to heal. So he had them in a rotation. So that's Hobson's choice. Today in our culture, how it really is perceived is that in our lives we have choices that don't often feel like we really had a choice, right? Or the choice that we have is not the choice that we really would have liked to have made. So that's how it looks today. But what is it about human nature? That when we have choices that don't feel like choices, or we feel like we shouldn't have to make that choice, what is it about human nature? How do we respond to that? Resistance. Resistance. She's like number one student here. <laughs> You're in the front row. <laughs> That's right. With resistance. And what do we know about resistance? The more you resist, the more it persists. Right. And so we get into that energy, which is a heavier energy, right? Anger, resentment. This isn't fair. Why do I have to? How come I have this choice? This wasn't in my life plan. Any of you can relate to that? It starts off early, you know. Think about it. I remember I wanted to go to MIT. That's where I wanted to go to college. Got the application in, was selected for an interview. I'm like, yes. Got denied. Oh, right. So there, once right there, that wasn't my my choice. Got shifted. So now where am I going to go? It happens time and time and time again in our lives. We have an animal that we love. It gets older. We have to make that choice. What do we do? Do we allow it to suffer, or do we put it down? 
It's a choice we don't really want to have to make, but it's a life choice. Our lives are full of them. And how we handle them is how our lives unfold with triumph or with regret. There are two paths. First path is acceptance. A level of acceptance. And if we choose the path of acceptance, it's going to bring us a lot of peace. The other path is resistance. And if we choose that path, that is the road to hell, my friends. Why do I say it's the road to hell? It causes so much suffering. So much, what if, if only, if I had another chance, how come they got that and I didn't? And we spin our wheels in that. In our culture, the term acceptance is used quite regularly. It's a buzzword. We hear it in AA, all those 12-step groups. Acceptance is a, a key component there. And I remember when I started Al-Anon, they were talking about this thing, acceptance, and I was like, obviously, they have no clue what my life is really like, <laughs> because there's no way that I could accept this, right? And we talk about it here at Unity, about acceptance. Acceptance. Acceptance is the way that we empower our lives. It's not just a buzz phrase. It's not just, well, all you need to do is accept it. It's OK. No. This is about shifting our mindset. Shifting our mindset. How many of you have ridden bicycles, like multiple speed bicycles? Show of hands. OK. So we start off on our bicycle. We're riding. We're in the low gears. And we're pedaling. We're moving. But we're really not moving fast or far. Because what we really need to do is we need to shift our gears, right? Shift into the higher gears. And then when we shift into the higher gears, what's happening is we're pedaling, same amount of energy, but it's easier. It's faster. We're going places now. Think of acceptance in that manner. Acceptance allows you to shift into a way of operating in the world with ease and grace, without struggling, without, life is so hard. No, life doesn't have to be that hard. So acceptance really is about empowerment. That's what acceptance gives you. Now, since I'm, I'm thinking about acceptance, I'm thinking about alchemy, the alchemists. Do you remember in the medieval times? There was alchemy. What, was, what were they trying to do? Make gold, right? So they were taking this... I love her. I'm glad she's here. <laughs> they were taking this lead, this heavy lead, and trying to transmute it into this precious metal of gold. This is acceptance. Acceptance transmutes what is going on in your life and flips it so that you see that it's a precious moment that is happening just for you, for your good, for your highest being. So I'm talking a lot about acceptance. Why should you believe me? You know, as unity ministers, we tend to be on the perkier side, right? When we give our, <laughs> when we give our talks, we, we want to be inspiring. But for me, it's not just about being inspiring. It's about how do I take this out in the world? How do I live this practically when things come up and hit me in the face? How do I transmute that into acceptance? We see it on those who have triumphant lives. One case in point that I want to bring out is, what about childhood? There are many of us that have felt that our childhood may not have been what we wanted. Maybe we felt gypped. It was unfair. Maybe there was some abuse. Maybe neglect. Maybe there was just apathy. 
Now we can spend our time in the "This is so unfair." Why did this happen to me? Woe is me! I didn't deserve it. Why is God punishing me? We can do all of that behavior, and you know what we do? We get into relationships. We get into relationships with people, and we recreate that same drama, hoping that this time it's going to come out different. This time, I'm going to be able to fix it because we are stuck in that loop. We are stuck in the unfairness, the injustice of it. Acceptance. What if we accept the cards that we have been dealt? The cards that I have been dealt allow me to have chosen the path that I'm on right now, to be this impassioned. I don't even think that's a word, but I'm using it. I'm coining it. Empathic person that I am today, gifts, my friends, gifts. So, how do I know that acceptance means a triumphant life? Well, I could think of one person in particular: mother, drug addict, mother in and out of jail. Mother gives up rights of that child because she's not functioning. That child is discarded to someone else's care. Now I don't know about you, but I could work that. In the area of unfairness, resentment. Oh, if only I could get into those relationships, creating that drama over and over and over again. This person accepted. This is the cards. This is what I was dealt. But what is my life purpose? What am I here for? What do I want to be known for? You may have seen her, Simone Biles, Olympic gymnast. Point in time, nobody can beat Simone Biles. I've seen some of my guy friends try it, but they never land it, so they get really upset. Simone doesn't require a lot of run into her tumbling skills, so she can fit a longer pass onto the floor than a lot of athletes. She adds the jump afterward, which is a simple skill, but it adds to bonus. Normally, the separations between first and second place could be three tenths or five tenths, and she goes out and wins by one or two points. This is a tumbling pass that you would see on the floor. And she does it on four inches wide. It's also the hardest dismount in the world, and I'm the only one that does it. <laughs> I would say it's probably no more than three days that it takes her to achieve a new skill. Many athletes, it takes them years. I would say Simone is definitely competing against herself at this point. Simone Biles, 
inspiration, leading a triumphant life. She's got a move named after her: the Biles. The Biles. So how are you going to live an extraordinary life? What are they going to name after you, as you innovate and create? Maybe it's the Schuster, the Pryor, <laughs> the Dwyer. I look forward to seeing you in your glory. And acceptance is really a key foundation in that process. You deserve to have a triumphant life. Trust me in this. Trust that acceptance is the key. I thank you for listening, and I'm going to ask Sabrina to please come on up and serenade us as we prepare for meditation. <laughs>